So I got some water right here. We're just gonna dump some on the mat and see how it does. Ooh, look at that. So it just pools. Oh, that's fun. Oh, it's trippy. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Height CNBS Intense Playmat. I did receive this sample directly from Height, but I want you to know that any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. They walk you through some tech specs and what's inside on the back. We have our core and key features right here. Basically, we have a 50 pixel QRGB array all around the edge and perimeter of the mat. Really nice grip and design that's super soft and water resistant. Now let's go ahead, let's open this up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up we have your user guide and manual complete with setup instructions. You can follow the charts and diagrams here, system requirements, everything that's included, additional information and languages on the back for you. You'll see everything that we get out of the box. We have our two cables. One's USB type C to type C. The other one is a type C to type A adapter. If your system only has the type A option, just make sure you have two ports available to use with the type C adapter. And lastly, we have the mat itself. Let's go ahead, let's open this up and look at it in more detail. All right, here it is. That was kind of anticlimactic. I thought we'd be able to roll it out a little more, but take a look. We have it unrolled right here on our desktop surface. Got the height logo and branding. Look at that nice LED bar all around the mat. Let's go ahead, let's flip it over so you'll see the other side here with the grip that we have to keep it nice and snug and it's not gonna slide around on any surface. There's the USB type C port right there that we're gonna use with some additional product information right there as well if you're interested in seeing that now without further ado let's go ahead let's plug this in and try it out now we have the height nexus software downloaded first up you'll be at this screen where you have multiple profiles you can choose from or add you can continue as a guest user log in or register if you'd like once you do, you'll be at this screen where you can view your system specs. So that's nice. We have a couple of key metrics right at our fingertips. What we're going to be most interested in right now is going to be the lighting section to adjust everything for our gamepad here. So first up, take a look. Everything's illuminated. Looks really nice. Very bright. I love the glow of it. we got a beautiful pattern going across the screen right now with their color shift preset. So first up, just pick and choose the different preset that you want, color shift, color swirl. And then again, you can adjust this too if you wanted to expand or minimize or rearrange it depending on what you're after. But take a look at that. And then we can adjust the colors, the scheme, we can add our own, adjust the hue, saturation, color filter. You get the idea. And then we can go down here, we can adjust the speed or turbulence. So there's a lot of customization options. Here's color bounce ball. I like it. And then we have our half color circle. Pretty cool. Nice glow and pattern to it. Mix color. You'll see that one. And then we can adjust the speed. And go slower, right? Somewhere back in the middle. Here's color strip. That's fun. Pick and choose your color. In this case, what's nice is it's gonna cycle through for us. Fluid grid. Pretty neat. Let me peel this up. I'll show you a little bit of the back side there too. But that light is right in the side of it and then it's diffused along the top and the bottom. We got our smile face, melting smile face. That's fun. Color rings. Checkboard fluid. Then we got a fixed color rotation here. 
So really nice presets. If you want, you could also hit the stop button. There we go. I want to start it up again. So nice, simple controls. So next setting up is screen mirror. This is really cool, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of gaming, you can mirror your screen and it's gonna take the colors from it and it's going to put them out on the pad for you. So if that's changing, the colors will change. You could move around, you'll see, you could expand it, you can shrink it, right? If there's a certain color or hue you're after, we go really tiny or we can go larger. And you'll see we have different presets then. Vivid, grayscale, manual, blur. Oh, that's cool. Negatives. So you can adjust that again depending on the type of content you're consuming to see different results. I thought that was pretty neat. Now we're trying it out with another video here again. We're just capturing our screen. Here's standard versus vivid versus grayscale versus manual, blur, negative. Pretty cool that we have those options here. Again, whether you're gaming or maybe you're watching a movie and you wanna have that more immersive feel, be sure to toggle that on. And one more sample for you with this nice nature video, giving you that feel again of what it might be like watching a movie with this setup. It'll process the different colors again, choose the preset, whatever you like best. And you'll see slower or faster, the colors will change again, depending on where you have it. So you get the idea, set it, forget about it, or really dive in and tweak everything how you want. You'll also notice too, down here, we can select different screens depending on what monitor we're using and our capture mode. Next up is our audio visualizer. You'll see that we're playing some music through our computer and it's picking it up right here. We have different presets. So circle ramp or color rotate, and then you'll see default screen or media art. You can pick your color source, but that's pretty neat, right? Looks cool too. And you'll see it's affecting how the lights are being displayed on the pad. Moving right along, you'll see we have the media tab here. So in this case, we have files that we can select and upload. Placeholder GIF is what we're using that came with this by default, just so you can see the feature here. Again, pick and choose where you want it. Adjust your playback speed. Do you want it slower or faster? Let's do it right about there. I think that looks nice. And then we have our effects right here. It says looping or bounce. Do you want that on or off? So currently it's off. Now we have it on. So if I'm understanding that correctly, it looks like it's looping right here. I don't think I'm making that up. And then if we turn it off, it's hard to tell. I thought maybe it was gonna be more of like a bounce in or out, but you do have that effect to toggle on or off, depending on if you like one better. It's hard to tell, honestly. Maybe that'll vary depending on the type of media that you have here. And then you'll see we have the static section so we can just pick and choose a color and it'll stay on that color. We have our color history too. Maybe we want a different color. You could also enter a value here if you prefer to maybe sync it up to your own personal brand, things like that. But that's nice. Got a static color here. Go pick some of the fun, brighter colors, and you can choose it that way. Now, it is interesting though, if you notice here, we can't increase or decrease the brightness. It's just set to that. And with the static color, we don't have any sort of lighting effect to keep it. I know that it is static, but you know, to have it orange and then like pulse on or off or anything like that. So it's true to its name, it's static, and there's nothing else you're gonna be able to do about it except changing the color. And then lastly, we have the other section here where we have our brightness adjustment. We have a couple different options we can enable or disable. Curve on or off. Pretty sweet that we have that way to adjust, especially during the time. Look at the time frame. That's pretty cool. So how do you want to adjust everything? It's really up to you. Manual control. How do you want to enable that? Pick and choose. Then you'll see we have our speed, same thing. Enable or disable. This is the curve, that's how it's gonna be if you want that enabled. It's 
So basically you have kind of some advanced scheduling there. And then RGB tester. Cycle through all the colors, making sure everything works. Nice and bright. And we're going to stop that test. So a lot of control options here, a couple of cool ways to display what you're seeing on your mat, whether it's screen mirror, audio visualizer, or if you want to upload your own media. Now back at the main dashboard, I wanted to go over a couple more things. The first one is the settings here. So first up, we have our settings tab. Take a look at what we can change and see. Different themes, performance settings, and our device manager. So looking to add more devices to our RGB hardware support. So keep that in mind. Maybe you'll find your device. Maybe it'll come on in the future, but they have a nice list right here of the current supported devices. And then I wanted to show you once we go back, we have the option to add more widgets. So there's a couple that we're missing, basically report bugs, cooling, gallery, and New York time, but we have our time right there. So if you want to remove a widget, but then you want it again in the future, you can just go here and add the widget. There's a couple more. And then it's also drag and drop. So you can rearrange those however you see fit. Now let's see how this mat performs. So the first thing I wanna test is how slippery is it? We have the nice grip at the bottom and you'll see for this test, we're actually gonna leave our other mat up because that has a nice slippery, easy to slide surface for, you guessed it, gaming and using your mouse and keyboard. So in this case, with it being on a slippery surface, it's not going anywhere and that's especially impressive because you might notice the edges are still raised up since we just unfolded this today so just keep that in mind we're not even making full contact with our surface also on that note you might want to put a book maybe a computer monitor a couple things like that to really help this even out after you open it up and take it out of the box next thing i want to see is how water resistant this actually is so let's grab some water and try it. So I got some water right here. We're just gonna dump some on the mat and see how it does. Ooh, look at that. So it just pools. That's sweet. So it just pools. Any liquid you're gonna spill will just pool like that right on the mat. Oh, that's fun. Oh, it's trippy. How does that even work? Look at that though. I mean, this is a fabric, right? But you'll see that most of the water is gonna pool right up at the top. Now I can work a little bit of it into the mat, but actually not really. Still seeing it in those small little dots there. Maybe you can work a smidge into it, but if you spill something on here, you'll have plenty of time to be able to actually wipe up and clean up your mess. When using this play mat, your experience will probably vary depending on the type of mouse that you're using, right? Are you gonna be using more of an everyday mouse here on it? Or are you gonna be using this for a gaming mouse. Obviously, most of you are probably gonna be using a gaming mouse with this, but even then, which mouse you're using, what's the bottom look like? Are you putting anything on or off of your mouse to enhance the performance in any way? So with that being said, and the fact that we all have our own unique preferences, here's what I wanna say. My observation after using a couple different play mats like this is gonna be as follows. This one's gonna be more lubed. That's the best way I would describe it when you just try to uh, get a sense and feel for the contact that the mouse is making with the mat especially compared to like I said all the different cooler master ones that we've covered like the one directly below it there's a noticeable difference so it's not like it's smooth or rough it's just more about the resistance or lack of resistance on the mat so some of that could be because it's brand new but a lot of that could just be too to how it's built and the quality of the particular mat so again if that's something you're really sensitive to and accustomed to then you'll probably really enjoy the glide on this mat versus a lot of the other ones you've probably used but this really kind of comes back to the same old same old around here which is you get what you pay for so that's always gonna be something you have to factor in too. Is something good enough for you? Do you want the best of the best? Is there a certain experience that you're after with your gaming setup? Those are the types of questions only you can answer for yourself. Now, let me share with you my final thoughts. Here's what I wanna say. In regards to build quality, this is top notch, fantastic job. Very comfortable, easy use. It's a great length for your setup. LED RGB array is beautiful. They also gave us a nice removable USB type C cable and they thought 
thought about the type A adapter depending on your needs. Also software controls, very simple and straightforward. In the future though, I hope that that whole software suite gets better as they continue to add more items that become compatible. That'll just make the value of this more useful than where it currently stands. So hopefully more and more brands will adopt that. So all of your favorite RGB stuff will work. Now, with all that being said, there are a couple things I want to point out. The first one is when you're buying a mat like this, it's really hard when there's competition out there that costs 10 times less. Sure, it might not have software controls. You might just have a dedicated controller or no controls at all to the RGB. But for a lot of people out there, that still might be good enough for you. So when you're in a high price category like this particular mat, it would be nice to see a couple extra features. So one feature I was hoping for is maybe some sort of wireless charging or power on here, not only for like a smartphone, but also to power any sort of wireless mouse. That would be really cool or any accessory like that. The second thing is I want this to be a more immersive experience. So I don't know why I got this idea when I first saw this product, I thought it had basically a rumble strip in it. So you'd be able to get some like haptic feedback while you're gaming. I think that would be really cool. Not sure if that's coming in the future, I doubt it, but uh, I really thought that that's what this had. I thought it was more than just a really nice customizable, you know, game pad, play pad, play mat, whatever you want to call it. I thought it kind of had more of that 3D, 4D experience while you're gaming. So maybe in the future that can be worked in. You know, it's not too thin, it's not too thick. You might be able to put some of those sensors in there, but that'd be really cool to have something like that in a form factor like this. Also, maybe, just maybe, a couple more USB ports. So you can maybe plug in your mouse and keyboard right here so it could act as a hub. Little things like that, I think, would help um, add a little bit more value to this particular product compared to some of the competition out there, especially that competition that costs 10 times less.